Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 725, that is 725 of the Agostino Zynga show, and I hope you're doing well wherever this lovely podcast may find you, I hope you are doing swimmingly. How am I? All good, all things considered, I cannot complain, all good, all things considered. I actually need to double check and see what the score is regarding my, you know, my illustrious and lovely country, Angola versus Cap Verde. There's currently an African Nations um, game going on and I just checked on my flipping Google and it seems like we drew new and new away from home against Cap Verde. We are pretty crap. If we lose or if we draw 0-0 zero, zero away from home against Cap Verde, it means that we're a terrible. So unfortunately, Angola, my country of birth, unfortunately, were unable to score a single goal against the mighty Cap Verdeans. Um, according to the match statistics, I see some stats here. Um, do we have any stats about the game? No, nope, we have a lineup. We don't have we have a timeline, but we don't have any stats about shots and stuff because I'm curious to see how many shots on target we got against the mighty mighty Cap Verdeans. Um, lineup for Angola's team. Who do we have here? Do we have any namesake um, folks here on the lineup? Let me see if I can find them here. We we'll go on the thing. We click the lineup and let's see if I can find any namesake people because this is quite an embarrassing result. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty embarrassing to see that we have drawn one one against the Mighty Cap Virgin. So playing for us, who we have here? Uh we have Gaspar, we have Fortuna, we have Mananga, Freddy, Show, Manuel. Uh we have a lovely one here called Lu Luvum Luvumba. We have Maluluba, uh Mabululu and Augusto. So we've got somebody close to me, number seven actually. Number seven is a pretty close to me here. He's called El Lloyd Augusto. We kind of look similar as well, don't we? <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> Maybe that's my dad, who knows? But big up Lloyd Augusto playing their covenant pitch for a Turkish side called Alan Yaspor. Um, so big up him. But yeah, we drew 1-1, I guess. So that's not greatest news, but hey, we continue, we strive, we continue, we absolutely strive. So recently I saw on my timeline that the one and only Peggy Goo has a new track out with none other than Lenny Kravitz. Yes, you heard that right. Lenny Kravitz and Peggy Goo linked up for a collab and it sounds as bad as you think it would sound. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of surprised that it sounded worse than I actually imagined. More so because of Lenny Kravitz, actually, not because of Peggy Goo. Um, Lenny Kravitz does this weird voice inflection thing because at the beginning, I was thinking to myself, wow, Peggy Goo's voice is horrible. When the opening verse starts of the record, you think, Jesus Christ, she cannot sing to save her life. Then I was listening closely. I was like, hold on, that's not Peggy Goo. That's Lenny Kravitz singing. And then once you like dig deeper and go into Genius and you check the fucking lyrics, you see verse one is actually Lenny Kravitz. So that's actually him croning when he said, you control my fire, baby, you have got it all. That's actually Lenny Kravitz croning. And he does this weird voice inflection. Like in, in all these other singles, he sings in a particular tone that you know Lenny Kravitz for, right? If you know Lenny Kravitz songs, you know what he sounds like. I don't know why for this particular record, he put on a particular voice inflection. Now, I'm saying this aloud and I'm not really too sure if maybe his regular records are done a certain way. Maybe he auto-tunes them so they sound a certain way and maybe on this record he preferred not to. I'm not too sure what it is, but either way, his voice sounds horrendous. Um, I don't know why the song exists. It's kind of like this weird disco, bop, poppy thing going on there. I'm not really too sure where the pocket kind of falls in there. And I'm also not really confused. I'm really confused why this is the second single after... Um, Na 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 na. That it or was it go? It goes right. Because I, I honestly hated that record, but it clearly did numbers. It was you know high in the charts for a bit. It was getting played all over the shop. Like obviously Peggy was pushing it hard. That's one thing she has to. You have to give her credit for. Like she does that thing that Tyler the Creator speaks about, where he says like a lot of creatives don't really. Um, put time into promoting their artwork or promoting their work in general a lot of creative people myself included will do the work put it out and never speak about it again but he basically mentions that you should keep pushing your work continuously like you should never stop promoing yourself um because if you don't do it no one else is going to do it and peggy does a really good job of that even when she had the other song um you know um starry starry night and shit like she absolutely pushed that record until the wheels fell off you know what i mean and she always performed it with a smile on her face like it was a first time like the consumer professional one thing you cannot take away from this girl when she gets behind the booth she might be again 
Pegu might be a pain behind the scenes. She might be a B-I-T-C-H. She might be demanding. She might be annoying. She might be a fucking terrible time to party with. Whatever this vibe is. But when she gets behind the booth, when it's business time, she fucking turns that face on. She gets going. She dances. She smiles at the fucking crowd, blows kisses. Like, she is a professional. So I do like the fact that she pushes her record. She came to London. She did that weird, like, guerrilla marketing thing that felt very performative. I'm not going to lie. Where she it felt like pay a couple people who dance at fucking gay or some inferno folk to go and pop down with her technical road and start vogue in the middle of the park it was very strange very odd but again it was a real event that she did she connected with the fans she touched and felt them took some pictures and then went to perform the thing in the club so clearly this woman knows how to push a record she can push a record really well but considering the success of it goes and again i didn't like the track but it went it went it definitely went in the charts this is an odd song to kind of follow up with i don't really know why the Lenny kravitz could link up doesn't make any sense personally for me um she could have probably put this out on her own without Lenny kravitz and it would have done maybe the same i don't really think he's gonna really take her anywhere musically or even in terms of popularity and stuff um you know whatever and yeah it's just a weird link up and even the picture the album cover single artwork thing is just odd it's like it's giving like um it's giving father and daughter it's giving like what i don't know it's giving you know you see these couples in fucking dober street market in it right where you're not really too sure who's the one with the fucking wallet or who's the one wearing the trousers you have no idea but it's just a strange car cover in general what it features lenny kravitz holding the hands of Len, um uh, peggy goo or i might say lenny goo as they fucking walk down the street somewhere it's a very strange one now maybe this is a collaboration that's going to be the first thing that we see for a long line of collaborations between the both of them but i don't really know what's going on there or maybe they're dating who knows maybe they're actually fucking behind the scenes and this is why they're linking up but either way it's fucking garbage um really really terrible maybe her worst song in her discography i have to be honest especially after i checked the actual what, where's the actual discography i think i've got it over here right now there it is if you actually check her discography this legitimately might be the worst song that she's ever put out um let's start from um it makes you forget right that's probably the one that everyone kind of knew her about right um itange um you got hanjan you got traveling um without arriving starry night and then you've got nabi what wow, wow, starry night got silver damn son damn 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 um nabi you got i go and it goes it goes like na 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 and legitimately this might be the worst one 100% that I believe in love again might be the le worst record I've actually heard from Peggy and usually she's really good at putting out decent singles again maybe not the most amazing you know um out there flipping artists in terms of creativity and shit but when it comes to singles she knows what she's doing but this record just feels like a pointless waste of time really even the lyrics like the verse um the opening verse by Lenny Kravitz you control my fire baby you have you got it all you got my body and my spirit winter spring summer or fall you got me rivering for to the rhythm even when I'm feeling small oh yeah you got me rocking to my rhythm and you got me feeling tall the chorus I believe in love again I believe in love again oh 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 Peggy comes in tonight you know that you're gonna find what you're looking for you and I to fill your dance floor baby please come on I wonder what it is about DJing because this happened to like Nina, Nina Kravitz too I wonder what it is about DJing especially for the women in the industry at a certain level of fame and celebrity and stardom they it seems that they all get bored of it I wonder why maybe it's just maybe it is actually boring to stand behind the booth it doesn't matter how much you're getting paid at a certain level, pressing Q and play and mixing a couple of tunes in, it might just get a little bit boring. You're like, you know what? I need to challenge myself. I need to feel alive again. I need to believe in love again. <laughs> so I'm going to go out there and try something which I think is infinitely harder personally i think it's infinitely harder to make it as a musician than it is to make it as a fucking a musician such artist is make it as a dj i think most people would probably agree with that um or it just probably requires more effort work um you know to kind of get through that kind of lane as opposed to just standing behind a booth and playing other people's music um it's because you basically have to create music from your own from scratch and it has to be good you know there's a lot of fucking um pressure on in that respect when it, whereas if you're djing you can select from the best songs ever released put them out and most likely you know put them together so in the mix and most likely most people will probably like what you play because it's the best music ever released right ever ever ever, ever. so i get that vibe but sometimes i also think there needs to be an appreciation on understanding why you're a DJ. Like why I play music is because I'm a, 
basically a raver at heart. I enjoy going to parties. I enjoy fucking going crazy. I enjoy dancing and sweating my face off and just that whole ambiance behind it. So after a certain point in raving, you either become somebody that just becomes a full-time raver or you become a promoter or you become a DJ, right? Or maybe you go and work in a bar or you kind of have your own club. But usually there's a point where you're like, you know what, I need more. And then you decide to kind of get involved on the other side of things. That's why basically I got involved. And of course, you discover a love for the music and digging and shit and all that malarkey and obviously improving your skills and putting that mixes to like 12 people, but you don't care because you love it so much. By the way, check out my SoundCloud link, link, link in the fucking description. But I think there should be an understanding if you're a DJ of your limitations and why you got into it you should be able to understand that hey i'm a dj because most likely i can't sing or i can't rap or whatever it is or i can't perform or i'm not a good dancer or whatever it may be you need to understand that and just be okay with that and kind of sit in your pocket no i won't say stay in your lane but sit in the pocket that you are best at because i still think as a producer if she you know whether or not she's producing them or not i still think she's got a good ear and understanding of how to pick beats and how to arrange things because i can understand a scenario where most likely she may have a ghost producer but they work in conjunction with together and i don't think that's anything wrong with that maybe she makes a move from herself from scratch cool but if not i'm still believing she has a good brain because i think peggy's like underrated when it comes to the whole business acumen side of things right and understanding how to move as an artist so i'm pretty sure she has a very good a and r brain to pick up certain beats to know what works where to how to arrange things like an actual producer producer in the kind of conventional sense right um and obviously put the records out and market them and just push them in the way that she pushes them unapologetically getting to work always smiling in the face like she's not doing a trip of red she's not fucking canceling tours or anything do you know what I mean she rarely even cancels shows like always up there always prepared always gonna play um always got the game face on but there should be an understanding that that's what you do the best that's what you're fucking world class at that's why you get the big bucks but then when you go into the artist thing, it's a bit, mm. but then I say that and I think to myself, look at Avalon Emerson. Avalon Emerson's got this band that she's put out, right? And before she put that band out, I wasn't really sold on Avalon Emerson as a DJ. I'm not really the biggest fan, but the music, the album, let's, let's not lie. That album is fucking good, <laughs> you know, and I have to give her credit. So sometimes taking chances can be very risky because I guess you could fail, right? And you could fail terribly and everyone can see it in public. But then I guess in some respects, it also is a little bit of a, there's no risk involved really, in it? Because you'd imagine most of the fans that like Peggy Goo for her DJing and her producing in the dance music sense will probably not care if she flops in her pursuit to have a solo artist career. Because that's what it looks like she's angling towards. The way the music video for it goes, um, sorry, what's that record called? Um, no, 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 no. It goes like, right? The music record for it, um, how it, for the music record for it goes like, the rollout for it, Obviously, the link up with Lenny Kravitz, it feels like she's angling herself to be more of an artiste in that regard, right? But I guess in her defense, there it's a, basically a riskless pursuit because your fans are like you for DJing and producing aren't going to fall out of love with you because you put out a couple of dud records or shit or even a double album. They're still going to be there. And the fans that you're trying to chase being a solo artist are going to be there when the songs are good. And when they're not good, it won't matter because you've got your DJ fans to kind of fall back on. Because if she decided to go next year and start doing fucking 400 dates or some shit, right? There's many agents, many promoters, many venues that will take her up in a heartbeat. She's not short of gigs. So that's no problem about money or about getting out on the circuit again. She's still super young. So she's got a long career ahead of her. So all that stuff is in, the, is in there. So maybe this is a bit of a free shot. Fuck it. Let's try something new. Let's go down this route. Um, which might explain why this is happening the way it's happening. And then, of course, I think about the Avalon Emerson album. Um, what's it called? I've got it here on my phone. Um, Avalon Emerson and The Charm. Is that what it's called? No, Avalon Emerson and the album's called The Charm. And The Charm, sorry. And it's fucking good. I was really doubtful about whether it would be great, but the album is really good. Um, nine tracks, under 40 minutes, superb little alternative... I don't know what you call it. Is it alternative? I think you, I guess you'd call it indie or something along those kind of lines, but it's a really good album. So maybe Peggy you saw that or maybe was planning before that to do that and now she's trying to go in that lane. Personally for me, I think, you know, again, the the the, the, the singles for me haven't been the greatest. It goes like, whatever, I could do without it, but it's obviously been super popular as you can see by the fucking certification. Look at that. It's a gold. It's um, it's British gold. Um, It's also got another gold. What's it? What's, what's FEMA? 
Oh, it's got it's it's gold in England. It's gold in Italy. It's also gold in Greece. Jesus Christ, what's the chart position here in the U.S. dance charts? It got to number five. Um, in England, where did it get to? UK it got to number five too. Jesus Christos, bro, that's a really good result. It's a big up her. So I guess maybe I'm the one that's maybe not in the loop and doesn't really plugged in. But personally, for me, I didn't like the record. Thought it was a bit terrible. And if anything, um, it's another reminder of just how difficult it is to be an actual artist outside of playing music of other people. It's not that easy. I'm um, talking about things not being easy. Playboy Carty fans, myself included, Jesus Christ, the news that we all knew was happening sooner rather than later, actually, I think most of us had this kind of, you know, in the back of our heads that this was going to happen, but it's been confirmed now by Playboy Carty's camp, um, Opium, everybody, and obviously Kuroku have got the fucking link on there, it says the antagonist tour that was meant to start in November in Europe and December has been postponed has been postponed officially antagonist tour featuring playboy carty king carson destroy lonely homicide gang everybody on opium has been postponed until the foreseeable future which again is no surprise um for most playboy carty fans i think if you're a fan of carty similar if you're a fan of flipping yay you just know that it's always going to be disappointment and l's and postponements and scrapping of dates and promising and never following through and now we've basically got that confirmed to us the tour is meant to start in november has been officially postponed most likely for the foreseeable future and we know what the reason is isn't it these guys are just too lit they're making too much money um they're doing way too well they've got the fucking youth in their palm of their hands like you, you have to think of playboy carty and opium in general just a, no play more playboy carty he's really unique in his position more so even than Lil uzi vert and more so even than i don't know yati and Tony more savage those same people that he was doing the fucking yeah maybe that that same kind of group of people right they kind of came up with i don't want to say the cypher because he wasn't in that cypher but He's in a unique position because he's one of the only ones in that group who doesn't really have to drop very frequently to keep his fans engaged. Like no fan of Carty is going to jump onto somebody else just because he's taking long to release or just because he cancels certain things that like they're still going to be there. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those, he has those weird fan bases where they're not going anywhere anytime soon. So he can afford to take chances, go on a break, do this whole mysterious thing, and they're not really going to go anywhere. Where the other ones, you think they are more in the artist grind, like they can't afford to take time off. Like they have to kind of keep putting out stuff and hope the fans don't go anywhere because, you know, that's basically the game that they're in. So maybe he take that for granted. Or the other part of it might just be, Carty's lit in it. He's probably out getting high, you know, God forbid he might be doing some other hardcore drugs and not just the party drugs. And, you know, sometimes those things get a hold of you and you 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 get in your little goon room, you close the blinds, you invite fucking, uh, you know, all these fucking baddies around, you get their phones, you put them in a bowl somewhere outside of the room, get them to sign NDAs and you just go crazy. You got eight balls and perks and everything all over the place. You got everything that you need. You're richer than you've ever been. You're in your mid twenties, like, you're probably just enjoying the trappings of your fucking lifestyle. And then by the time you realize, you're like, oh shit, the tour's about to start, isn't it? I've got to start rehearsing. I've got to start going all the fucking final plans. Because probably, I'd imagine his agent or his manager is probably hitting him up to kind of confirm details. Like, hey, we need to confirm this shit with this venue. Are we going to go here? What sort of stuff do we need for the set design? Um, the fucking merch. All this, you know, the little fucking things, the details you need to kind of, you know, you need to dot your I's, cr cross your T's. And he was like, you know what? Fuck all this, man. I can't be bothered, man. Fuck this. I've got a couple of fucking baddies in my room or in my hotel suite or in my house. I've got fucking Onyx, you know, um, playing in the fucking room next door <laughs> by himself. <laughs> I've got a table full of fucking, you know, rails of fucking coke lined up, perks lined up, MDMA, Molly, weed, lean by the fucking truckload, right? I've got them in bowls that you can actually, like a, he's got lean in a bowl, like a punch bowl. That you can scoop your cup into and just kind of drink from there. <laughs> he's already thinking, I don't need this, man. Don't bu bun this, I'm out. And then he just decides to jump off and then kind of do something else. I'm not, it won't surprise me um, that ha happened. It's not going to be ticket sales because this is a very anticipated fucking tour. It's got everybody in the scene now who's really kind of pushing culture forward, especially the first three in Carty, Ken Carson and fucking Destroy Lonely. Homicide Gang are still coming up. I saw, I've, actually they just dropped an album recently that's fucking banger. I think it's like, what's it called? Like the Second Amendment or something? I think that's what the album's called. Is it the Second Amendment? 
Let me just double. Yeah, that's no, sorry, the, the Fifth Amendment. Um, my favorite track on there has to be fucking B5. Ooh, Bamba. But yeah, um, Antagonist Tour um, was very, very anticipated. Carty obviously hasn't dropped in a while, so everyone's kind of anticipating to hear what he's going to be performing live. New tracks, just a performance overall. Um, you know, just seeing them perform live together would be fucking sick. Do you know what I mean? Having King Carson, Detroit Lonely, Homicide Gang as openers, plus whoever else is going to join them, uh, you know, locally and stuff to fill up the fucking lineup would be fucking sick. The fucking, the set design would have been great. The show itself would have been great. The stage sorry the the backup dancers who always have some really cool ones the visuals all that stuff would have been fucking sick but unfortunately it's all been postponed and there's probably not going to be any update on this until middle of next year don't be surprised or according to fucking academics the actual update is this which i'm very very doubtful on i'm i'm pressing exit doubt on this one this is courtesy of dj academics i guess carty decided to give him some information to put out there official press release says carty antagonist tour uk and europe dates rescheduled allegedly we haven't got rescheduled dates it's been postponed but we haven't got rescheduled dates new album is coming soon so no dates on the rescheduling no no dates on this supposed album coming soon opium signees ken Carter show lonely said to support the tour so just repeating the same thing so not really much of it was a press tour you don't really get much information but he put out an official press release via car via academics to appease the fans and also gave the fans a new picture of himself right um in in wearing some hockey gloves with a anna bolina headscarf um what you call it what do you, what do you call them again do rag that it's an it's a do-rag with the logo that looks like a parental advisory logo but obviously it's from this designer called Anna Bellina and whatever we're meant to I don't know what we're meant to take from this it is what it is he's got hockey gear on now I guess Carty's in his fucking hockey goalie era NHL hockey yeah NHL Carty or something I'm not sure how this is meant to appease the fans because we want a show we want an album we want a product but it is disappointing but also not utterly surprising I think even yay fans who were hoping that he was going to do that performance um um, Thai and Yay performance in fucking Italy and dropped the album. That hasn't happened. That got that got cancelled actually last minute. They booked the venue. Like according to some Yay accounts, that 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 show was on the go. I'm thinking even one Yay account actually person bought a ticket to go. He bought a ticket to go to some where was the location? I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna say it wasn't like a main city. It was like a smaller. Maybe it was a main city, but it was like kind of out in the outskirts. So it was like in the middle of nowhere, a little bit. And some hardcore fan bought a ticket to go um, to this event that Ye was going to do with Ty Dollar Sign to promote their collaboration album. And then at the last minute, the whole thing got scrapped, and we still haven't got no dates for it yet. We've seen pictures of Ye out in the middle of flipping what is it Dubai or Qatar somewhere like that in this amazing, you know, resort or hotel. Place place that's in the middle of the desert it looks fucking beautiful and allegedly he's making music there who knows but if you're a fan of yay and then you got into car you should be no surprised these guys you know are a bit um temperamental very unreliable and most likely whenever they put a date out there it's not really going to be the date they're going to put stuff out you just have to hope it comes out when it comes out and if it does come out it's going to come out super super late so um don't hold your breath for the uk tour rescheduling um when it happens it happens don't hold your breath for the new album release date when it happens it happens it's really a big shame really to be honest because i was looking forward to it i was definitely going to go to the uk tour i was obviously looking forward to that tour probably leading up to a of the new album but now we have absolutely no details we don't know what's going on we're all kind of having to hope and pray that something does happen and then you know maybe we'll see that <laughs> we'll see these guys perform in the uk sometime soon but for the meantime i guess you can listen to your len you can listen to your um figgy mina whatever that guy's name is listen to your fucking lancy foes and shit to kind of you know occupy you for the time being there's another kid too i've I discovered recently on twitter who's really good i got a kid called dom Corleo. he's pretty sick um there's gonna be some other stuff dropping up soon so just keep an eye on those type of dudes who drop regularly and also you know what i liked actually the, the kid Leroy album was actually really good it's called the first time and i actually really enjoyed that so there's plenty of people out there you could probably be listening to in the time being and hope maybe the guys that we love, you know, the Carties, the Carters, the fucking Destroy Lonies, Homicide Gangs, all those guys, we're hoping we can see them on tour soon and that will lead to a Carty album. But don't hold your breath. Do not hold your breath, please, because you might end up passing <laughs> because it's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, talking about stuff happening this time soon, I'm really, really happy 
and pleased to see um, this new fucking music video featuring J. Cole and Drake. It's absolutely amazing and it kind of reminded me of the incredible run that Drake has been on at the moment with these fucking music videos. It feels like he hasn't missed so far, music video-wise. Like he's been absolutely, absolutely killing it when it comes to music videos. I, I think of the one that he did with fucking um, with 21 Savage, um, Jimmy Cooks. That was sick. I think of the one where he did with all the girls are basically trying to propose to him. I forgot that one, what it was. I think it was like a prom night or something. I forgot what that's wrong. Oh, that's right. Uh, falling Back. Um, I think of Sticky. That was great. Jimmy Cooks with 21 Savage was a fucking awesome video. Um, the performance with Savage for Privileged Rappers was fucking sick. Rich Flex was, re- oh, sorry, Rich Flex was really good. Jumbo Shit Popping was good. Spin Bout You was awesome. It basically seems like he hasn't missed with his music videos. I'm not just sure what happened because it was a period in time where Drake's music videos were terrible, really, really average, really corny, really lame. And if anything, they made you kind of hate the songs. But somewhere along the line, he sort of turned shit around and decided, you know what? None of this. Let's actually go and start putting out sick music videos again and reminding these motherfuckers what time we're actually on. And so far, this video that he did with J. Cole for the fucking single first person shooter is absolutely sick. I love that how it's, it's basically two goats you know battling out throughout the entirety of the fucking music video that's kind of really the theme i love the fucking first um scene here that you got uh drake and j cole playing table tennis in front of a crowd of like hundreds of thousands in some arena it starts off in the office and then it goes to them playing in an arena that looks absolutely sick and they got to like all these fucking phones watching them play in the dark in this massive fucking space and then i love how they recreated this iconic picture um that most of you will know um that was um, done for vogue i think that features messi and christian Ronaldo. if i'm not mistaken the only sad thing about that picture if i'm not mistaken wasn't it true that they weren't in the same room at the same time it was a photo shoot that they basically blended the images together that was the only sad thing about it like there's no actual footage of them doing the photo shoot together if i'm not mistaken but um regardless of um, drake and j cole recreated that amazing scene between messi and cristiano ronaldo that was really sick then you got this really cool little um scene here with drake and um, j cole looking at their squaring up for a fight ufc type type of thing um drake does a really good impression of a fighter actually crossing his arms his shadow boxing is pretty good but j cole's is terrible you can tell j cole can't fight like the way he was fucking swinging in the air was horrendous like he definitely needs security <laughs> so he's definitely not somebody that could trust his hands i also love the meme bit um where they're pointing at each other like the spider-man meme that's done really well um Dr- jacob probably put, put the he couldn't put the mask on because he's got too much these dreads are too much um obviously fucking drake did that was fucking awesome and then i also love the best bit for me was when it turned and the beat switched towards the end and drake obviously can't flipping spazzed and went absolutely crazy right in that in that verse he went absolutely nuts reminded it actually reminded me why i love the song so much i felt like as much as people complain and say that drake should have come harder or that fucking j cole watched him i think what he did really well in this album in general he let the songs breathe like when somebody else would fit better like even the yeet feature yeet obviously spun on that verse on that track that they've got together but i felt like drake did that on purpose like he actually is at a place now where maybe he's not as what's that thing called insecure when it comes to his records he's not really trying to outperform or outwrap people he's actually giving them space to do their own thing and i felt like he did this with his j cole feature like he actually let j cole do his thing um snap and go do hard as he needed and at the end he obviously did his thing but it was more so hey what can i do to bring the best out of both of us on this track and he finally did that shit i love it um i actually do love these pants i think last time i remember him saying something along the lines of he makes them himself drake said he makes these pants as well i think it was um during that interview with one of those um instagram what are you wearing outfit type people i think he mentioned he makes them himself so he just makes them in different materials and shit but i really like the pants that drake's wearing these days these massive oversized cargo things because they're kind of done in the shape that he obviously likes where they're really narrow at the top but they have this kind of bulbous almost wide fit at the bottom but they're also not super flary they just look more baggy that's something that i actually like um, i'm not really the fan the biggest fan of the constant flare thing i kind of like when they're just baggy um uh, you know they've got like a slim fit but they're just baggy towards the bottom so he cuts those really well there's a really great scene i love the bit where he's naming all the girls and then the girls are all like the dogs in the fucking lift that's really good right carlene carlene dun, dun. Like, like he fucking snaps on that one um that's a really good scene obviously all the dogs coming out and then there's a really cool scene here where drake's at the top of the building um like michael jackson right with the with the fucking pavements um bits lighting up on the floor and he's dancing and shit and absolutely going crazy and he's got this really amazing he's got like it looks like a 
it looks like he's got like a bejeweled coach jacket on like he got a coach jacket and he got it basically done in sequence which looks sick i'd love to see that actually if that's true someone make that like take a classic streetwear staple which is a coach jacket and then cover it in fucking sequence so it's all sparkly and shit and he's also wearing the original michael jackson glove that he's got um performing to a crowd of people down below right he's got it here you can kind of i think it's like a baseball jacket maybe it's a baseball jacket i'm not too sure what it is exactly but it looks absolutely sick but then i love the best bit for me is the statue because it reminds me of that um if you remember i think around maybe it was uh, yeah was it i think if you guys the album history actually this is why i know some of michael jackson law during history michael jackson was fucking you know biggest thing person out and his record label um decided for a promotion of his album they decided to make this fucking huge statue um that was really big it was a big statue and they had five of them and i think they sent them to different parts of, of the world one of them came to london if i remember correctly they had it on a barge going through the fucking river thames and they had to even fucking stop the fucking um what you call it they had to uh one of the bridges i forgot what the bridges had to kind of be um lifted up for the fucking statue to go through and it was huge 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 statue that was made and it's kind of like in gray with my chest and it's kind of the iconic pose that he does in that video that everyone kind of knows the famous one where he's wearing the glasses and has that kind of metal admiral fucking uniform on and he's performing and he just stands there for like 10 minutes not moving and everyone in the crowd is fainting and shit it's that exact pose they got that pose and they made it into kind of like clay you know cement type looking thing and they had it flown or look you know put in five different locations around the world and i think drake basically copied that same statue if i'm not mistaken so you see the same thing because it's obviously made in gray as well it looks fucking sick and it's the same statue that he wore no it's the same pose that he wore in the video for um what's that one where he's wearing the fucking virgil stuff that's a that's am in charlotte isn't it yeah atm in charlotte with a jacket that's covered in the v's which is great as well because drake's always fucking picking up and honoring um virgil's legacy even more so than fucking yay which is awesome to think about that and it really considering that yeah he's a much closer friend to virgil than drake was but drake definitely does honor his name but yeah big up drake and fucking j cole love the fucking music video absolutely well done and i think the director as well needs to get a lot of credit who's the director that did it director was gibson hazard gibson hazard absolutely smashed it whoever gibson had this is absolutely killed it gibson hazard absolutely killed it what a great fucking music video i enjoyed every fucking bit of it i think he's even got a credit at the end in it somewhere here if i'm not mistaken let me see if i can find it got a credit like a massive there we go gibson hazard deserves all the credit there for that amazing music video um of course they're featuring j cole for first person first person shooter absolutely loved and enjoyed it absolutely loved and enjoyed it moving on from that one let's talk a bit quickly about the new balance and, and jound we've got another pair about to drop it seems like they've got a long-standing collaboration um agreement here going on and so far i've loved every single release so and i also love these they're kind of done in this olive green um new buck suede finish let's see if i can get a pitch up to load there's a big one and it kind of looks more like a new bucky as opposed to a suede a bit more flat on the texture the only thing i don't like about them is the laces i hate the cord laces a lot of people do these to kind of give the shoe an outdoorsy type of feel it looks like it might have Gore-Tex on them as well right is that a Gore-Tex label on the side there I'm not too sure it has a Gore-Tex label it might look like a Gore-Tex label but regardless I think a lot of people do these kind of like cord laces to kind of give the shoe an outdoorsy type of mountaineering-ish type of feel but I just think they're terrible to lace basically like if you're going to do um, cord laces you have to have the little um, what you call it the little spring-loaded um, clip that you got so you can just pull the laces through and you don't need to actually kind of like lace them yourself and tie a knot um similar to how they have with salomons and shit i think that'll work out better but i just don't like the laces anyway like, they look fucking horrible but the only thing that is good with these is that this particular designer laces where it's black and it's got the white dots or the white little threads on them you can get that style of lace in like a regular nylon cotton lace whatever the material is made of laces and obviously that'll work better so if you do purchase them you can probably swap these tubular cords for a tubular set of laces that have got the same designs or flat laces with the same designs i think will work best because i don't really sure i want to because again you can't really knot cords especially if they're kind of springy and got elastic in them they're hard to really knot um so you're either gonna have to buy them your exact size so they don't slip off your foot or you're gonna have to just walk like a duck or like a sneakerhead you know sneakers back in the day used to walk like a duck with a kind of your your toes pointing out and shit maybe it's only way to kind of get them to kind of stick on your feet but i do like the color combo you got this again like i said olive green or don't say olive green more of a darker green um the out 
on the upper with a mixture of black and i also love the black out because personally for me when you have a black midsole you have to have a black outsole so when it comes to new balances there's too much shit going on there to make anything else to make it work so i do like they've got this solid solid black midsole here and obviously you've got the mesh on the other bits and pieces here and i think maybe gore-tex underneath so it's a good mixture of the new buck the leather and the mesh going all on there in one time there's a good little side profile also they look really good i like them they look really really bang i'm not going to lie i love i love the way they look here no idea on the release date so far oh yeah it's gore-tex you got gore-tex there and the model is a 2002r um that's their new model that they're pushing at the moment i really like that i like the kind of um what, what would you call this invisible seam here that's going on in the instep is really nice um and just even the section of materials here right that's a good little mixture of the materials you've got a little bit of maybe 3m here you've got some mesh um, you got the new buck and then you got this little kind of rubber plastic um, heel tab counter thing going on there. And of course, you've got the little addition of the fucking jound hit. Oh, and if I'm not mistaken, also, if I'm not mistaken, that picture of J. Cole and Drake. J. Cole's actually wearing the jound New Balances, isn't he? Yeah, he's actually got them on, actually. The ones that released, maybe the ones before last. I think these are 990s or 991s or something. I forgot. But it's actually got the, you can actually see the jound label here at the back. So he's actually wearing a pair of the Jowns, actually, if I'm not mistaken, right? There's a label there at the back, you can see. And Drake's wearing, I'm not really, I think Drake's wearing that brand of shoes that he um, has been posting on his Instagram. The ones that are made by uh, like a small designer. They kind of look like space boots, obviously, to match his big chunky jeans he's wearing. So he's got like, what's um Chrome Hearts custom jeans they've done. But yeah, Drake Cole's also wearing a pair of Jowns. So Jowns shoes are really doing a ting nowadays. And I do love, again, uh, maybe I would have preferred to have this Jown written on this kind of heel, this heel counter there, so on the back heel tab, to be completely honest. But it's nice, I guess, because it looks like that heel tab at the back might be Gore-Tex. So it might be a 3M. So once you shine a light on it, and especially with this white counter with the text, you'll probably you'll probably have this great feature where if you spark, if you probably do a flash on the heel tab, it'll shine. And then you'll have this down written on the outs. You know, you have a, a clear bit basically where you can read the down. That might be a good little feature. So maybe that's why they did it design wise. But again, no idea on the release date or when they're going to come out, but they do look absolutely sick absolutely sick and continuing on from that we have this really cool collaboration between bone soda and salomon on my favorite salomon model which is the xt6 um xt4s for me feel a little bit or look a little bit flat i don't like how they wear in um they kind of lose all their shape they kind of remind me of the old converses before the 70s were put out they had a tendency when you wore them too much they would kind of just lose any kind of form or sturdy or rigidness they, they had and then when they put out the converse 70s it felt like you could wear those things into the ground that they still have that really nice almost triangular shape to them in terms of its kind of overall look and i think the xc6 do the same sort of thing you wear them in you batter them but they still maintain their fucking form and i have a power pair so i can really attest to that and definitely for me they are my favorite model from all of the fucking salomon lineup so it's good to see bone soda collaborating on these and um colorway wires you have this really really nice almost i must say washed out pink almost lilac purpley color on the inside with the mesh with this really nice pattern similar to the pattern they have here the kind of um it's almost like a webbed it, you know, someone could replace someone could probably say it might look like the residue of like you know human ejaculate all over it but i do like more sort of a tipexy spider-man sort of pattern or spider web pattern on the upper and then you've also got this kind of off-white counter with the cage and you've also got the same thing with the um, bottom bit of the upper here just before the midsole that's done in this kind of off-white ivory type of color and of course the salomon logo in boston there you've got some nice tubular lace is there none of that rope um elastic -y nonsense um especially with the whole pull tab thing which i fucking hate a normal tongue of course that like you see on the xt6s and bob's your uncle granny's your aunt now for me personally i'm not the biggest fan of all black midsoles and all white sorry i'm not the biggest fan of light uppers all black midsoles and all all black outsoles i like it if you're gonna do an all black outsole or all black midsole sorry and outsole to have the upper be somewhat dark that's why i think the jowns that we just spoke about about earlier which are over here that's why i think these jowns work really well because the upper is kind of dark you've got this really dark olivey type of tone with the blacks on it and of course some of the grays involved and then you've got the fucking black midsole that's how i think those things work the best personally for me anyway i don't really like when it's like a light
light color like this on the top this white kind of pinky color and then it's got the black mid so it kind of makes them look a little bit too clumpy weird big i'm not even sure how to describe the look of them but if you see it um you can't really unsee it personally for me like that black midsole with the dark upper works far better than how it does here with this color but still i like that the fact that they're a collaboration because most likely you know it's easy to tell that these are a special edition because everybody in london and probably most metropolitan or hip cities in the in the world is fucking obsessed with salomon shoes and these sort of stand out a bit more because of the color where you're not really going to get these you know regularly in a pair of you know in a size or something so maybe that alone is what makes them worth it to get um but it's just a midsole thing i'm not really a fan of but i do think once you look down on them like that pattern that kind of spider web um sort of print pattern on there looks really good the black tongue with the contrast of the fucking white laces looks really cool and i actually do like how this color of the black sort of the, the sorry the um, what would you call it the little tip that kind of pops up here at the front of the shoe I like the contrast of how it kind of contrasts with the white in here. So that kind of looks quite cool. I'm not going to lie. It does really look quite nice. Um, let's see what they say here on the blurb. It says, following the release of their collaborative friends and family RX slide, which is this one down below, right? I fucking hated this slide. I'm not the biggest fan in general of like trainers made into slides. There's something about it I've always hated. I think if you're going to make a slide, make a slide. I hate the kind of hybrid shit. Like I think there's, I think even Nike put out an Air Force One that looks like a slide, right? They just fucking cut the back off and make, it's like, come on, bro. If you're going to make a slide, make a slide. Don't just make one where you just take the trainer and you cut the fucking heel off. I fucking hate it. So never been a fan of that model. So I didn't really like that collaboration when they dropped, but I actually do like these XT6s. So to continue, London-based creative imprint, Bone Soda has teamed up with Solomon to unveil their second collaboration, the XT6 Expanse LTR. Solomon have some of the worst names for their shoes, isn't it? Why can't you just call it XT6? Why the X XT6 Expand LTR? I'm sure there's some technology, but they need to find a better way to call what to call their shoe models. They don't really have a good pop or ring to them. Do you know what I mean? Like Nike and Ada still have them beat on that regard. Like XT6 Expand LTR. I was like, come on, name them after a crave or something. Name, just name a shoe after what's his name? Um, after the guy from fucking Emmy Leon Door. He's done enough numbers for you anyway. Name a shoe after Joe Fresh Goods. You know the fucking JFGs or something like allow the fucking ltr expand xt6 like, jesus christ sounds like morse code anyway continue as a whole the shoe represents a connection between being active constantly moving and living freely in a universal form oh, all right it's exactly the same ethos bone soda lives by having recently opened its own creative hub titled dijonus how did he say that dijon Digions, Digions, a purposeful and modular space that allows like many people to learn new skills, connect with peers, and foster creative thinking. So, like every other space, isn't it? But I like it. I like how you have to always kind of reinvent this idea of a collaborative space where you can buy zines and you can take little pictures of yourselves and you can shoot the shit, play cool music, maybe DJ in the corner, have some drinks, right? You have to always kind of find new ways to make those spaces make sense in the new in the new era. But still, big up them for putting it out there because I'm sure the kids are connecting with her and loving it let's see now bone soda's latest creation with the solomon has been unveiled as support of the support the foot while this graphic web graphic represents the support of the community really bone soda's latest creation from solomon has been unveiled to support the foot while this web graphic presents represents support for the community yo hype uh, writers need to be fucking they, they need to be arrested and thrown in jail additionally the shoe is an is an ergonomic approach to living life in color what's ergonomic about this like i guess technically all shoes are ergonomic but come on bro um designed with a full grain and leather upper the shoe has been crafted provided long wear and durability while the agile chassis um tm skeleton gives further stability so basically that tm skeleton thing is kind of what's that word called? what was that nike thing called with the fucking strings it's sort of like their copy of that in it that technology because I remember Nike had this technology where it was like um, these sort of web things or whatever that was on the... It kind of worked really well. I remember I had a couple of running shoes that had a sort of thing. I remember it was undercover running shoes, that kind of Gayosku line. And they had this weird web design on these sides where essentially once you put your laces through the lace hoops and you tie them the, the idea was that those little web designs had a bit of give in them so that they would kind of you know um clasp your foot a little bit tighter on the outside so that they wouldn't move around too much so i guess these free a type letters are the same sort of idea where they have some sort of binding in there 
or some sort of support or some sort of web system where when you pull them on the lace tabs they sort of like tighten on the outside maybe but it seems very nike i wonder if nike are okay with them copying that technology but let's see the sensi fit tm is used to cradle the foot from the out midsole and with the lace system see that's what i said already there um offering a secure snug and virtually customized fit you can find a close look at the skeleton available and it's going to be available on november 16th so they already dropped they probably already sold that anyway let's actually double check fucking um what's it called let's actually see if they're available on StockX, so because they might have actually already been sold out, but let's see what StockX is saying about them. Let's see, uh, Bone Soda New Balance XT was it XT6, right? Let's see, we've got the we've got the slide on here, but it doesn't seem like they still have the XT6s, even though it says it's gone November 16th. What day is it now? Is that why I'm bugging out? Oh, it's a seven, yeah, okay. So, there was some drops already. So, why aren't they listed on here? Did they release already and no one's got a pair yet to resell? Probably, maybe that might be the case. But you've got the slide here that's already going for. Let's see how much the slide's going for in terms of resell. Let me get up on the screen there so you can see with me. So, we've got the um, Salomon RX slide that was also a collaboration with Bone Soda, the 3.0. If that's how bad the 3.0 looks, I'd hate to see what the 2.0 looks like because honestly, I hate sneaker slide type of things, like, they look fucking awful personally for me that actually looked better as a sneaker because it's got that nice little sock neoprene design here but as a slide no thank you i don't want to slide like that i actually don't want to slide that spits that snugly actually i want my slide to be loose and you know have my feet kind of you know i want that kind of sound where my feet are kind of getting clapped you know <laughs> that's what i want i don't want these fucking snug slipper neon pre neoprene type fucking gizmos on my toes give me something to slap on Okay, so far we don't have the StockX one. All right, fair enough. I'm waiting for the price on these to see what the price is. It's not telling me. Unfortunately, my computer is loading like an absolute snail. But yeah, we don't have the other Solomon shoes. They're not actually listed on here, to be honest. Let's see if we can kind of get them up on here. But let's see if we can get them up on the search. Let's see what we can find here. Because I'm surprised that these aren't available to purchase right now, actually. Especially on StockX. I thought they'd have them already available once they've already dropped on the 17th but i guess maybe i was the one that was incorrect and in the know and wasn't in the know maybe it was me maybe it was me yeah so far only one shoe there from solomon okay fair play well i guess you have to check them out when they do release in general but so far i have no inkling as to when they're going to drop or if they're available to purchase right now it doesn't actually seem like that's the case um, we don't actually see them anywhere here. Okay, let's see here. Um, let's see what Soul Retriever says in terms of location, whether you can fucking drop or whether they're available to purchase. Maybe they're not even available on resale sites because no one actually went to resell them. Okay, they're available to release to buy now. Was it released once? One site released already on Solomon in the United States and nowhere else. So you can buy them now and go and slam. Your slam jam are selling them. Okay, cool. For how much? 165. 145. Damn, son. They are not cheap, are they? 145. Oh no, they're 160 actually. Even more expensive. Damn. Bone soda X <coughs> six expense. Vanilla. Okay, it's a vanilla ice the colorway. I thought it's like an ivory. It's more vanilla ice. And the, the purple or the pink is more of a pastel lilac. To be fair, they look really good here. That product shot, I think the lookbook images don't actually do them justice. I'm gonna be honest. The look of lookbook images kind of dust them out. But these product shots from Slam Jam. They make them look far better. They look really hard. I actually love that whole entire black midsole, especially with the shiny plastic, um, you know, what's that What's that technology called? ACS counter thing on the back. That looks really cool. I'm not going to lie. These look really nice. I'll, I'll actually wear these in a heartbeat. They look really cool. Oh, and the back heel tabby thing, if I'm not mistaken, is that a sort of like a, what's that material there? Is that like a suede? Different. New Bucky suede? You know, I'm a sucker for New Bucky suede. But that, that, I like how it's kind of died a little bit here on the outside. So, because I'm assuming once you wear these out, especially if it's different materials, you have a different type of um, wear and tear and aging and whatnot and dying on certain parts. Similar to how the Tom Sachs shoes were, where they'll purposely per pick up dirt and age in different ways. So, you have these different tones and shit going on there. I really like these, man. These look really, really fucking cool. And you've got a nice little bone soda hit on the tongue there as well. Yeah, these are really nice. These are one of my favorite new bands I've seen in a while, to be fair very very well done so big up them purchase them if you want have they actually got them with my size still here uh emo went back and stuff okay cool all sold out my size all gone as well <laughs> they're fucking cunts but yeah big up them absolutely love them 
um can't wait to see what else they put out in the future moving on from that we have this really cool feature update as well courtesy of over and under regarding little yatty's air force one so if you remember there was a episode of what was it i forgot what episode what show it was i'm gonna say it was a random show of one of those like sneaker store somewhere in america where american rappers go and buy like expensive shoes and shit right um one of those kind of resale stores and they had like a little interview with them yeah he was walking around looking at stuff to buy and whatnot and i think he mentioned in the interview let it slip that he's got a collaboration with nike coming up and i was curious because he's in a bit of a different phase in terms of his style he's trying new things out he's experimenting with his shoes a bit more and he's kind of got his own little style thing going on at the moment so i was curious to see would he decide to go for like an a legendary sort of shoe model or would he try and do the cactus plant flea market thing because i think he's possible he's capable of doing that the lane that he's in now how he's kind of you know the kind of frequencies vibe he's on now in terms of creativity and his inspirations and his looks overall i feel like he could easily decide to go you know what i'm gonna go to cactus this plant flea market way instead of just doing the bait model i'm gonna go and put out my own shoe similar to the flea too and just see what that does i thought that was what he's gonna do like he just make his own model from the ground up maybe using the base of a sneaker that already exists but kind of fleshing it or kind of you know adorning it with things to make it look a bit different but he hasn't he's actually gone the opposite way and decided to go into the archive and do a collaboration with obviously one of my favorite sneaker models of all time when it comes to nike models um my kind of top five i always say are the jordan fours the air trainer ones the air max 90s um the air force one and i guess my last option would be the harachi the original ellie those would be my probably my favorite nike models of all time but the air force one is definitely up there especially the low i think the low is by far one of the best nike models ever i think that pan the panel design is far you know that particular model in the shape is exceeds anything a dunk could do i've always been surprised why dunks seem to be more popular nowadays with the current trends in air force ones considering the amount of options you can get on air force ones considering the looks considering the versatility the shape you know the extra bit of height it gives you the sturdiness everything about it looks fucking sick but one thing i do love about this yatty collaboration with nike for the air force one is how simple it's been done the execution is what really impresses me because it seems like he's a real sneakerhead because this looks like an inspiration that he would have maybe got from some of the older nike collaborations from like maybe the late 90s heading into the early 2000s especially some of the co.jp ones because i feel like the co.jp ones the japan exclusives what they did in terms of colorways is that they either went super crazy hard like the 3m snake for instance right? i've still got i've still got one of these in my collections watch i'll show you what this one my favorite one right um 3m snake right and it's the co.jp one specifically because it came out as a retro but I, that's not the one i have i had the actually original one right and it's fucking beautiful and i think i purchased them from like a random store somewhere that didn't even know what they fucking had in their fucking you know list of things but this co.jp nike um the code you know japan exclusive one this is what this is how i feel like the difference in terms of like great air force one designs you go either crazy like these and you have like a, a black and a black and silver model where it's basically got black and it's got silver bits here are made in 3m with a snakeskin swoosh like done in incredible premium materials just an absolutely beautiful fucking shoe you do like this or you do something really really subtle like the recent ones which i really liked which were the kif the kif air force one right i think it was a kif one and they were like an exclusive i think they were like a one that um there was a very stereo it's a very simple one that he did one of my favorite models of of recent years actually collaboration wise um so big up ronnie faith for doing these where it's basically an all white upper um the swoosh has been made with like the, the it's got the paris sort of like colors on the tiny shoes in the front similar to like an, uh, the back in the day air maxes you've got a nice um pattern on the swoosh you've got a blue lining but essentially just a classic air force one so i've always felt like if you're gonna do a fucking air force it's either go really crazy or go classic in terms of the color combos another really crazy one would be the undefeated from recent years right in terms of all the different fucking paint and colors on them so that's how i feel like air force one should be done either you go really crazy or you go really simple but nothing in between and that's why i feel like the little yatty collaborations that he kind of put out recently are maybe some of the best i've seen in a while because he's just gone the really classic way by just having a nice clean white upper nothing too crazy with this nice bit of like I guess it's like a dark navy instead of like a black. So it's got line dark navy on the lining on the inside and on the outside. Oh, and then it's got the concrete um his new music label and collective logo here on the outside on the pill tab 
on the heel section, sorry, it looks like it's been stitched as well. So it does look like it's been screen which might be a really good detail. And it looks like on the back heel tab, it's also got a different logo there as well, which looks really cool. Um, so yeah, for me, these are great. You've also got a nice wrapping bit of paper on the inside with the concrete logo. And you've got the, the logo, the kind of slogan that they have, it's us written on the underneath as well. Um, I like that the concrete boys logo kind of looks like a little bit no limit soldierish. It's got that same type of like illustration or artwork design, right? Is that or is it just me? I always felt like that logo has really good no limit um logo. No limit records, right? Logo. It's got that great kind of like almost amateurish, simple sort of design to it, right? In terms of the the kind of illustration. It kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Maybe that's where the fucking inspiration for the logo came from, but I really like the kind of No Limit S kind of a vibe behind the logo itself. No, don't you like it? I think that looks really, really sick. So big up little Yatty for those. Let's see some more pictures of them actually. So again, it was mostly an all white Air Force One. Um, I'm cause I'm considering. I would imagine the upper material is probably made of really nice premium leather, so that obviously gives it a nice little bit of a panache or whatever it is on the up on the upper there. Um, and again, for me, classic colorway that is going to be super versatile to wear it many, 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 many things. Um, I loved, I loved the cat. I, I just love this combo, all white with the. Because I remember in the past there was a collection that they did previously where it was basically this. It had like different the same outsole with the same insole kind of colorway so all white the outsole will be red inside will be red like these type of flips and they will look really cool so maybe that's where the inspiration of it come from or maybe there's another is it like an air force one mid that same kind of forgot which one it is but anyway regardless really really sick um you see yatty there also wearing them with these current style that he has going on where he wears these really big aggressive pants this must be like a size 39 or something it's probably a 32 way so they look so it gives you an idea on what the fucking style of them and what he's trying to go for um you can kind of see some of the references in terms of the years and stuff this is basically an outfit that you would imagine people would would wear in the fucking 90s and 80s and stuff that's the kind of vibe everyone's going for and the shoes actually match what he's going for in terms of vibe i also like that vintage pinstripe um what's called pinstripe hat on he's got and actually that's really cool too but the shoes themselves look really great no idea on when they're meant to release um his collaborator for his podcast mitch has a really cool little funny competition going at the moment where he's um auctioning off or raffling off or giving away a pair of concrete boys air force ones for the person who can send in the picture of the best bbl and people are just sending floods of pictures of girls and stuff online and she who, who they think have the best bbl and he's going to judge and give the shoes away allegedly next year halloween or something which is funny but yeah um i love them they look really cool i would instantly buy these these are definitely within my lane air force ones are my favorite nike model um top five for sure and these look really great i love them they look really really fantastic so big up little yay great collab and again i'm surprised because i honestly thought he was going to go the cactus plant flea market way or the fear of god way and just design his own shoe from the ground up but the fact that he's taken a classic air force one and did this is fucking sick and to be fair it's good too because it matches his style um if you would have done a mid or a high would have made sense because he likes to wear these big baggy pants and i feel like to me um air force one lows are the best when they worn with big baggy pants i think air force ones uh air force one mids and fucking um highs are probably done best when they're worn with fucking aka skinny jeans so you can get the whole look of the shoe so you don't have to cover cover them with pants and shit but i feel like if you're wearing big pants and they cover most of the shoe definitely go for the low definitely go for the low so i'm definitely a fan of them and can't wait for them to officially come out when they do come out i'm hoping that this is not a family and friends pair i'm hoping this is the pair that hits the retail and we're not going to got a, we're not going to get a regular pair that doesn't have the logo or all this sort of nonsense like just bring these out to the public let the public buy these also please that'll be great and i'm assuming oh actually i saw on the, on the tongue label too it says it's us i didn't see that before that's really cool too i just got a feeling too there'll be some merch associated with this so maybe the merch is that hat as well maybe the merch is that hat or maybe it's this um jumper with this old with this old logo it's a crew neck jumper too so it's not even done with wrangling sleeves so it's nice little boxy 80s type of shape in the mild gray so maybe this is all part of the collection as well maybe everything he's wearing Maybe even the pants as well. Maybe the pants are all part of it. You never know. So let's wait and see what happens because this looks like a Nike offices too. That might even be his house. I'm not really sure. But regardless, um, I'm curious to see what happens when they initially do drop because I would definitely be purchasing a pair. I would definitely, definitely be purchasing a pair. So I cannot wait for them to officially drop. Cannot wait to them officially drop. Um, continuing on with little Yaddy news. This is a little bit more of an of a, uh, you know, a bit underwhelming news to be honest. Um, there was recent 
leak came out i think it was free via tremaine about a um denim tears and cactus plant flea market levi's collab um and it was called a giant red tab and i think the idea behind it was to take the classic you know jeans that levi's make and the jean jacket and where the little red label is just basically make it super big right exaggerated kind of thing enlarge it kind of play with the dimensions make it a bit fun and i thought the technically the idea made sense or whatever maybe and i think the other thing is always to take the stitching and do the same thing so wherever the yellow stitching was you'd make that really enlarged so that it kind of covered most of the fucking jean jacket and the pants and i guess the idea behind it was cool but i don't really think i like the execution according to these pictures of yati that is been shown where he's sort of like modeling some of the pictures right and i think they're going to drop today no, they're going to drop, I think, on a, on Saturday, actually. So maybe we'll get a picture, official pictures of them better. But so far, they don't look that great. So you've got a regular pair of, I guess, 501s or whatever shape that he's got with a gem jacket. And then you've got the massive label on the side. But I don't know if the execution is what I was thinking. Um, obviously, you see some of the big things here. So where you'd have the little tab on the inside of the pants will be there they kind of made it a bit bigger so it kind of extends across extends basically across the whole length of the back pocket even bigger levi's written there and then you've got plant written there on the inside too and i guess maybe you're gonna have tears on the other side so maybe it'd be levi's tears plant levi's kind of going on there um and yeah they just don't look as good as i thought they would look personally regular shape levi's just a big let pull tab in the same sort of color i guess makes some sense but i just thought they look a little bit cooler than that i'm not really sure what i was what i was hoping for but i guess it's not that that's the only thing that's a bit disappointing they don't really look as great as i would thought they would look and there's also pull tabs in random places there's one on the arm underneath the arm there's one on the inside here where they meant to where you meant to button it up and stuff so i'm not really sure what's going on there in terms of that i guess just to be fun just to kind of poke fun at it and not really take it too seriously maybe that's the whole point of them but i don't know they're not really that great to me they're kind of a bit of a disappointment in terms of the look and how they basically um are made to be it's not really the best personally i'm not really i'm a bit underwhelmed to be fair that's basically what i want to say they're a little bit underwhelming so that's a bit of a concern but i guess these are coming out soon so you'll be able to see them you know better in more detail and if you want to purchase a pair you can they're going to be available from the 18th and 19th on the denim tier site when they eventually do drop when they eventually do drop Anyway, that has been the Exxon Show episode number seven to something. What was it? I think it's seven two five. Thank you for tuning in. If it's the first time tuning in, you know what to do. Smash the like button down below. That would be greatly appreciated. Underneath my voice, you will be hearing my tune today. You can just see details of that in the, in the description. Links to all of my social in the description. Links to the story I was talking about in the description. Links to the Patreon description and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care for now, people. Peace.